Good morning and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Kitchen. We are now in a position to actually define what it means for a predicate logic sentence or formula to be true or false. So we had our notion of a model, which had this domain and this interpretation. We introduced the notion of a variable assignment. And now we're going to put all of these together to determine when a particular model and a particular variable assignment makes a certain formula or, well, or, or sentence true. So let me bring up the whiteboard because we need it for our definitions. And first, just remember that we have this notion of model consisting of a pair that has a domain and an interpretation. The interpretation covers all of the kind of non-logical part of our language, the constant symbols, the relation symbols, the function symbols, these sorts of things. And then we also had this notion of a variable assignment, which tells us kind of what in our domain each of the variables gets assigned to. We also talked about the notion of an X variant or a Y variant or whatever variable you are interested in. There's one more thing that we need to say about this, which is that when you are looking at the interpretation of a term where that term happens to be a variable, the interpretation is just going to be what is assigned to it by the variable assignment. So just to note that if some term tau is a variable, then we say that the interpretation of tau just is whatever the variable assignment assigns to it. With these things in hand, we can define a notion of truth. Truth is always going to be with respect to a particular model and a particular variable assignment. So the first thing that we will do when defining the truth conditions for a predicate well-formed formula phi or a formula in a quantified language, we will always start by uh, fixing a model and a variable assignment. So We'll call our model curly M. It's this domain plus interpretation and variable assignment V. And then we define a notion of truth with respect to a model and variable assignment of some formula phi in a recursive fashion. So just as we did for the propositional cases, we will start with defining when an atomic sentence is true or false, or sorry, an atomic formula is true or false, and then what the truth of the propositional connectives, uh, the truth conditions for them are, and then we will talk about the quantified formula. So we'll do these each in turn. This here can be read in a variety of ways. We might say that phi is true on the model with the variable assignment or that model M and variable assignment V is a model of phi, or N V makes phi true. But the important thing is to note that this is the double turn style. So this is the semantic notion. We are talking about truth and meaning, not about proof. That will come later. So we'll start off with the atomic formulas. Some model M and variable assignment V makes a relational atomic formula, so something of the form R tau 1 to tau n. So R is an n airy relation. It could be a unary relation, i.e. a predicate. It could be a binary. It could be ternary. We are giving the general definition. So whatever arity R has, that's how many terms it is. This is going to be true if and only if if you take the interpretation of each of the terms from one to n in order, if that tuple is actually a member of the interpretation of R. So R is an n-ary relation. Its interpretation is sequences of objects in the domain. If one of those sequences is whatever each of these terms is interpreted for, then the sentence will be true. The other type of atomic sentence that we have, you'll remember, is identity statements. So things of the form tau1 equals tau2. And these are going to be true if 
what these terms are interpreted for in the domain is in fact the same thing. So here's where it's important to remember that if our term is a variable, then the interpretation just is whatever the variable assignment assigns to it. Now we have the propositional connectives. So these are where you take atomic formulas or other formulas and combine them together using negation, conjunction, disjunction, and implication. And these are going to be exactly as they were in the propositional in propositional logic. So MV makes not phi true if and only if MV doesn't make phi true. A conjunction is true if and only if both of the conjuncts are true. A disjunction is true if and only if at least one of the disjuncts is true. So again, as usual, this is an inclusive or. And then we have our conditionals. These are going to be true if either the antecedent is not true or the consequent is. So nothing new in the propositional case. It's unsurprisingly the quantified formulas that are the interesting one. So this is where our notion of a variable assignment or an X variant comes into play. So we've got two quantifiers to consider. So we'll look at the universal one first. So something of the form for all X phi will be true on a variable assignment if and only if for every x variant v prime phi so the formula without the quantifier is true on that variant then it shouldn't be any surprise that the existential quantifier so exists x phi is going to be true if for some x variant v prime M B prime makes by true. So what we are doing here is say, well, it doesn't really matter what our variable assignment happens to assign to this particular variable in this particular model. In order to know whether something is true of every object in our domain, we have to consider every possible variable assignment. So every possible value that X could take, take in this particular domain. Similarly, with the existential quantifier, it doesn't matter what X gets assigned to on this particular variable assignment. In order for the existential statement to be true, there has to be something that X could be assigned to that makes the sentence true. So it could be what I mean, it could be that V already assigns X to the object that makes the sentence true, but it doesn't have to, and it doesn't need to. All it needs to be is that we can find something in our domain that makes the sentence true, and then we can say the existential statement is true. So this is the definition. It will become a lot more clear exactly how this works, particularly in the case of the atomic sentences and the quantified sentences, I mean, the propositional stuff by now you've got plenty of experience in. The other ones will become more clear when we look at some examples. And that's what I'm going to do in the next probably two videos. That should probably be sufficient for us to get some examples. And so take a look over the definition, work your way through it, maybe try to come up with some examples on your own. But after you've done that, join me next time and we'll go through some examples together. Until then, take care. See you then. Cheers.